Hey guys, how you doing out there? Uh, so here it is, my year in uh, production music, 2021, uh, the wrap-up video. So before I get into it, I just want to make a couple of really shameless plugs here. Uh, this Pop Strings MIDI pack that you see on the screen here, this is at uh, $10 uh, for the MIDI pack at the moment. It's on sale and all the proceeds go to charity. 100% of the proceeds go to charity from now until uh, January 1st. Also, just want to plug the Production Music Academy. Um, I'm bringing the introductory prices back from now until January 1st also. So you'll find all those links in the description below and that'll expire come the new year. So that means that the master tier for the Academy, uh, which will give you access to all past and future course content, uh, is currently at $20 a month. And you can join the Academy for as low as $5 a month and get all the uh, community benefits. So go check those links out, uh, see what the options are. And also if the Academy isn't your thing, then currently all the courses are available on Teachable right now and they're all 50% off. And there's some bundled uh, discounts as well. There's like a corporate music bundle and uh, a trailer music bundle. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, this was a good year for me and for a lot of reasons. I didn't write a ton of music, uh, but I did feel like good about the music that I, I did release and put out there. Uh, I put several albums out on my Spotify, uh, two of which are on Artlist. Uh, I launched the Production Music Tools website, uh, created five music production courses. Um, I launched the Production Music Academy just recently in November. And uh, I started a podcast with uh, with Eric from Make Music Income, joined Taxi, which has been fun. Uh, I did some custom scoring for Patagonia, uh, Yeti, uh, Parks Canada, and even Google. Uh, I started live streaming earlier this year uh, for the first time, and I've been having so much fun with that. I'm going to continue doing lots of that next year. So I certainly got a lot to be grateful for, and I honestly, it just wouldn't have been the same without you guys. Um, you guys kept me motivated through all of it, and I've been absolutely overwhelmed with the amount of positivity and encouragement uh, that, you, that you've sent my way over this last year. So I'm sending out huge love uh, to all of you, and I can say for sure that I am really, really excited about all the stuff that I've got planned for next year. And I'm excited to continue my journey with sync licensing and looking forward to sharing that journey with you guys here on YouTube. I also want to say quickly that I was a bit torn about doing this video in the first place and, you know, a bit hesitant about talking in too much detail about this subject on the podcast as well. And in my mind, I had like kind of like a pros versus cons list uh, when it came to t talking openly on YouTube about how much money uh, I made from uh, music libraries, specifically uh, this last year. Basically, I don't know, kind of worried that I'm going to come across like I'm bragging or I'm trying to flex. Um, it's certainly not what this is about. Uh, hopefully, my hope is that I'm going to inspire people to work harder uh, because at the end of the day, I really do believe that, it, you know, if I can do it, then anyone can do it. Uh, ultimately, it just take some perseverance, some, you know, some patience and some hard work. And let's be honest, there's lots of producers out there who are doing way better than me. Um, most of them are not on YouTube talking about it openly and, uh, or maybe they are, and I just haven't found them yet, but I guess there's not, there's not too many people in the, you know, the stock music space, uh, speaking about this stuff online, but I'm certain that there's, yeah, there's plenty of people that are making uh, way more income than I am off this stuff, but it's exciting to me and I enjoy talking about it. So there you go. Okay, so I had to tally up the score for the tax man anyways. So here it is, uh, the grand total earnings for uh, 2021 from sales on royalty-free uh, music libraries was just a little over uh, 30,000 uh, Canadian. That number will look a little inflated to uh, my American friends. I prob that's probably about $23,000 American. So as you can see, uh, Artlist um, accounted for about 61% of that of that total income, uh, Motion Array at 36.5 and Audio Jungle at 2.2 percent. So I should mention that when I made this little uh, Google Pie chart here, I did actually punch in the amounts for VFine uh, 100 Audio and Pond 5, and it shows up as this little green sliver right here. But I think it's actually collectively like lower than a single percent. So it, <laughs> I don't know for whatever reason it didn't I didn't it didn't get a line uh, saying anything. Um, that's what happened. Now, what's really interesting is that is the number of songs that I submitted this year, which really wasn't that much. So Motion Array's 11000 uh, just a little bit above $11,000 uh, Canadian, um, was the result of submitting about 28 songs this year. Artlist uh, being about uh, 18600 Canadian um, was for 14 songs submitted in, I think it was about, I think they went live in April. So I believe that's 14 songs on Artlist, and uh, that's two albums, and one of them is uh, an instrumental version. 
Before I forget, I do want to give my friend Mansage, um, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, by the way, but uh, my friend Mansage got in touch with me about um, six months ago, and um, he was really interested in trying to get his music on Artlist. I think he'd been rejected uh, with his initial application. And I think you guys will find uh, his story to be really interesting, actually. Um, yeah, he got in touch with me and asked me for uh, some personalized uh, feedback on the tracks that had been rejected. And this is kind of a service um, that I offer in the Academy, by the way. Uh, but yeah, he wanted me to review his um, his entire catalog uh, that he had previously submitted to Artlist. And um, like I said, it was initially rejected. I believe he applied three times in total to Artlist and finally made it in. He just sent me an email uh, the other day to let me know that he had finally made it through. And I was able to give him some pretty pointed feedback on the on the stuff that he had submitted. Now, of course, I can't speak for uh, Artlist. Um, I, you know, I don't know exactly uh, what it is or isn't that they you know like or dislike with their applications. And of course, I'm not going to take credit for uh, Mansage um, for his application going through. But I hope that some of the feedback uh, that I was able to give him helped in some way in terms of him finally getting accepted. But what's really interesting is that he mentioned that he asked the Artlist team for clarification on making multiple submissions um, and, and reapplying. And they got back to him saying that there's no limit on the amount of applications that you can send in. So I thought that was, you know, that's pretty cool um, that they allow for like resubmissions um, soon afterwards, like soon after the rejection. I'm not sure if it's the same deal on Motion Array, um, but I think it's really cool that they do that. And, you know, they're kind of giving people the benefit of the doubt and assuming that they've, you know, done some work on, on uh, making revisions. So uh, big props to Mansage uh, for getting through. And it just shows that it's like a matter of perseverance and, and patience. So Audio Jungle um, was a grand total of about $650 um, Canadian this year. Uh, 23 songs submitted to Audio Jungle. Uh, Pond 5 was $133.68 um, US. I don't think I converted that to Canadian, but 20-ish uh, songs were submitted, I believe. Um, it wasn't as much. I kind of like gave up with Pond 5 in, in a sense. I guess you could say there's like a hundred, about a hundred tracks were submitted to Pond 5 if you include um, all the, uh, you know, the edits and the separate files. So 100 audio was at $134 uh, US. 134 is where I'm at right now. And I think that it needs to be at like 200, I can't remember what it is, 200 something uh, in order to meet the threshold uh, to get that um, that payout. I have heard recently that the when you do get paid from 100, 100 audio that there is quite um, a lot of, like there's a big fee, like a transfer fee. So I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not, honestly, I, I'm really not so sure I'm going to keep uploading to uh, to, to 100 audio or, uh, or VFind uh, for that matter because VFind was actually only $5.00. Um, and 84 cents. There was only, I, th I think I only got one sale there uh, this year, and um, it was like 20 yuan, uh, which is like about five dollars uh, Canadian. Um, 28 tracks were uploaded to uh, to VFine uh, this year, so not much action on uh, the Chinese libraries. Although I do still think that there is potential, only um, because I've been talking to a lot of people who do well on uh, or one or the one or the other libraries. So. Several people I've talked to have actually had uh, payouts from VFine, so um, so not going to count them out completely. I, I don't know how much I'm going to really be uploading to them in the future, though. I think what makes the most sense for me is to keep focusing on uploading music for Artlist and Motion Ray primarily, and also pitching to exclusive production libraries for uh, TV and film placements. Um, that's the next goal for me, and I, I think you know that it's one that will take time to achieve. Uh, but uh, I've been chatting with Eric, you know, from Make Music Income about this a lot in our podcast, and uh, of course, I'll be sharing that journey with you over the next year. I think if you look at the results here, there's an argument to be made for focusing on quality over quantity. Um, this is what I preach in the academy, and I guess you know, ultimately, the goal is quality and quantity. Um, it's important to have regular output, of course, but you know, look over the last year, I, I only had you know time really to write about like 30 uh, plus tracks for the libraries, you know, less than half of which I thought were suitable for uh, art list. Um, so, I, you know, I did write a lot uh, more than just those 30 tracks. I did a lot of custom scoring work as well. But next year, I mean, I for sure want to double all of these numbers. And uh, over the next year, I plan to, um, you know, write a ton of music. So big props to uh, Motion Array and, and Artlist. 
you guys have been awesome to work with. And yeah, I, I feel very grateful uh, for the opportunity to uh, have my music on both of those platforms. Okay, so I'll leave it there. And uh, yeah, feel free to check out those links in the description below. Uh, check out the Academy. I'd love to show you guys, uh, you know, how I'm writing this music. And uh, I, I'm really open about my process. And um, I think the courses have been helpful uh, for, uh, for the, those of you who have taken them so far. And uh, I love sharing my work with you guys and, um, you know, doing the live composing streams, uh, doing, the, doing the feedback, listening to your guys' work. Uh, we got a lot of really fun stuff coming up for next year. I got some challenges, some contests uh, just around the corner. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll see you guys there. And also a big shout out to the Discord community too. Um, there's some amazing discussions happening there. I'm like learning, learning new stuff almost every day. Uh, so you guys have all been great. And um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Uh, hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. Uh, let me know how you guys are doing. And I'm wishing you all uh, a very happy holidays, uh, a very Merry Christmas. And yeah, hope you get to enjoy some time off. And I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye.